Welcome to video 8.3, the last video in our lecture series on CouchDB. And in this video, we're going to be talking about replication. So first we're going to look at how to configure replication in CouchDB, and then we're going to look at what happens when we have conflicts in CouchDB. Because CouchDB does favor being highly resilient and always being available, uh, so there are chances that while Couch CouchDB does uh, attempt as much as it can to maintain consistency, then we're going to have instances where updates happen uh, at the same time on two disconnected servers. So how do we bring that back together? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. While replication can be a fairly complex topic for many DBMSs, as we're going to see in the coming examples, CouchDB makes setting up replication relatively simple. Now, unlike many replication schemas, CouchDB uses a multi-master or master-master replication. Now, recall in MongoDB and really most other database management systems, we'll have one writable primary server and then multiple secondary servers that are read-only. We're not able to write to those. In CouchDB, on the other hand, Every server is able to both be read from and written to, even if it has completely lost contact with all other servers. So just like we talked about in a previous video, that the CouchDB philosophy is that networks are going to fail and hardware is going to fail, but the database should remain up. That's uh, what this is facilitating. Now, of course, there is going to be a trade-off in consistency because if one database can't see others in the cluster, it can't make updates and it can't make sure that it has the latest version of the data, but CouchDB is always going to be available and partition tolerant. The replication we set up between servers can be either unidirectional, meaning that data replicates from server A to server B, but not vice versa, or it can be bidirectional, meaning the data replicates in both directions and a change on either server will be replicated back to the other server in the replication group. Replication can either happen one time or we can set replication to happen continually. And replication can either be scheduled periodically or it can only happen on demand when we request a replication to take place. So at this point, I'm actually going to pull up the console for our local CouchDB instance, as well as a remote installation of CouchDB and walk through the process of setting up the cluster. So here we have our local installation of CouchDB on the right hand side. This is just installed on the computer that I'm working at and you can see the URL is localhost. And on the left hand side, we have a remote installation of CouchDB. And in fact, this is installed on a Linux server running in AWS. And we're going to configure replication between these two installations. Now note that I do have the students database we were working with in a previous video on my local installation. However, there are no databases at all present on the remote installation. So I'm going to go ahead and configure replication between these two installations of CouchDB. So I'm gonna start by clicking on the replication button and we see we have no replication activity or history to display. So I'm gonna click this green button that says new replication. Now at this point, all we need to do is specify the information about the source and the target and then, uh, and then options regarding the replication type. So my source is going to be a local database. It's going to be the student's database. We're going to authenticate with a username and password. And then my target is going to be a new remote database. And the URL I will share with you guys outside of this video. And we have to provide the port number and then the name of the database that we want to replicate to. Authentication here is also going to be a username and password. And replication, we can choose either one time or continuous. I'm going to choose continuous so our data stays in sync all the time. And I'm going to click this start replication button. And just as soon as we click that, if we go over to our remote database and click refresh, you see our students database has already replicated over to the remote system. That's pretty cool. 
So we can look at the actual records on either side. And in this case, we have uh, an Angela Bradford on our local system and an Angela Bradford on our remote system. If I were to make some change to this document on the local system and click Save Changes, if I reopen that on the remote system, see that change replicates just pretty much immediately. Now, since we have at this point only configured replication in one direction, if I were to make other changes on the remote system and click Save Changes and then open it back up on the local system, that change is not going to show up because our replication is at this point only going from the local system to the remote system. It is unidirectional. If I make a change here on our local system, however, it will overwrite whatever was on the remote system. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our bi-directional replication now. So on my local system, I'm just gonna go back into the uh, replication tab and click new replication again. And this time I'm going to select my source as being a remote database. And I'm gonna provide that URL. My authentication is going to be a username and password. And then my target is going to be this time an existing local database because I just want to replicate back to my students database. Pick students, username and password. And then replication again will make continuous. And as soon as I click start replication, now we should be in a position, let's see at this point. So let's take a look at this uh, next record here. We have Charlie Davis and on our remote system, uh, Charlie Davis. So if I add a uh, one, two, three on to the end of Charlie Davis on the local system, and then I open this back up on our remote system, you see Charlie Davis one, two, three there. And let's add four, five, six on the end of his name on our remote system. And when I click Save Changes and then open up this record on our local system, you see that change has replicated. So we have bi-directional replication working. Now, the final topic I want to talk about is what happens when we have a conflict. Now recall that we previously discussed that in order to update or delete a document, we need both the ID and rev values. And what happens is CouchDB reads these values in just before an update or delete occurs. And then when it attempts to do the update or delete, it provides those values back to CouchDB. And if the values don't match, then it knows a change has happened somewhere in between the time that the transaction started and completed. And so that update will fail because the database is in an inconsistent state at that point. So let's uh, flip back over to our server here and look at an example of that. So we have our document for Charlie Davis 123456 open on both the local server and the remote server. And let's, uh, just get rid of this and put XYZ. We'll put that on the end of his name and click save changes on our local instance of CouchDB. Now at this point, a new value for revision has been created. See it's four dash seven, eight, some other stuff beyond that. Uh, whereas on our remote server, we've read this value three dash one, nine, two, seven and some other things. So when we try to make an update on our remote server, the value for rev doesn't match what the value for rev actually is. So let's just uh, put testing on the end of this. And when we click save changes, we should get an error saying there is a conflict. And yeah, the save failed, there's a document update conflict. So on our remote side, let's read the document again. Now we get the updated value for rev and we can we can now update the document to be whatever we would like for it to be. 
So that is our quick look at replication and replication conflicts in CouchDB. Go forth and do great things.